Hi friends, hello, hi, how are you? I hope you guys are having an amazing day today. Hello and welcome to Glomus. Four calling friends, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. Anyway, um, hi. So today, oh, candle of the day. We have a candle of the day today. Today's candle of the day it is from Bath and Body Works. It is their um, marble chocolate cupcake candle. If you would like to see all of the candles, including this one that I got during the candle day sale that Bath and Body Works has, it was their like $10 candle day. Um, I have been posting videos on my vlog channel every single day during the month of December. I will have that linked in the description. You guys can go check it out. We've been having a lot of fun over there, ranking Taylor Swift, daily vlogs, reacting to old content. You get to see the new house which I'm currently filming in um so go check that out if you're interested but yeah today's video I feel like this is somewhat highly anticipated um a few months ago I did an internet history which is kind of this series that I started it was really heavily inspired by people like Sarah Zed where I just kind of liked to do deep dives into crazy things that have happened on the internet. I have a few of these planned this month, but I think the most highly requested one was an internet history into Sister Geddon. I like to call it the drama that never ended, and a lot of you guys have been requesting it. Um, the only thing about this drama is that because it never ended, was hesitant to put all of this into one video, not only because I think it would be an obscenely long video, but additionally on top of that, I wanted to make sure that because some of the timelines are so funky, I really tried my best to make sure everything was in the order that it happened um, and really accurate. Um, so I hope I do a good job of that. Today, we are going to be covering what I would argue was one of the sort of biggest beauty guru drama scandals to ever happen. And I think what's so interesting about this drama, especially now being able to look back on all of it, I think it's really fascinating to see the way that pretty much everyone involved in this drama or scandal, they didn't really go down because of this particular drama. Like after all of this sort of ended a few weeks after it started, none of them were really hit too, too hard in the beginning, maybe Tati, but the rest of them just kind of kept going. Um, but they were all brought down later for other things that I don't think would have happened had the Bi Sister scandal not happened in the first place. I feel like Tati's main video, Bi Sister, was really what started this domino effect that led to a lot of the top creators on this platform um, to kind of fall from grace. And I just think it's a really interesting drama to look at. It's interesting to look at now that we have so much more context into what actually happened and what went down. And the other thing I find really interesting about this is that there's a lot of he said, she said, and there's a lot of stuff that is still not entirely clear. Even years later, I mean, the very first thing that popped off with this was in 2019. We're about to be in 2022. There's really still a lot of heavily disputed details on this case and this drama. Before we jump into today's topic, I do want to say that this video is sponsored by Felix Grey, so let's roll that. Hi friends, editing me here, and today's video is sponsored by Felix Grey. Felix Grey makes blue light glasses like the one that I'm wearing right now. This is my second pair. I use them all the time. I like to have one in my bedroom and one in my office because I use these when I use my phone at night or if I'm like reading on my iPad. And these are the Lovelace in Rose Mellow, but I also have another pair that I keep in my office for when I'm doing a lot of computer work. These blue light glasses are incredible. I was very, very skeptical about blue light glasses when I was first kind of approached, but I used them for about three months before my first sponsorship with them, and they have become so essential to my daily routine and life. Felix Grey glasses filter out 15 times more blue light, so that way you can lessen the strain on your eyes when you're using your everyday technology. So your phone, your iPads, your computer screens, it just really helps lessen the strain on your eyes from looking at a screen all day. I was funny, I was talking with my friend the other day in the car, because we were talking about blue light glasses and I was like, I love the Felix Grey ones. And she was asking me why and like what the benefits were. And the benefits for me are really just like the best analogy I can use is when you're driving in your car and you have to put on sunglasses because the light is like too bright, like the sunlight is too bright. And that instant sort of relief you feel of eye strain as soon as you put on those sunglasses, that's how I feel now when I look at a screen without the glasses on. And then when I do put them on, it's this instant strain relief on my eyes. The cool thing is Felix Grey is also now offering 
wearing prescription and non-prescription ones. So that way if you're a glasses wearer like I am, you can put these on in place of your normal glasses and still get that blue light protection. If you're looking for a holiday gift, Felix Grey's blue light glasses are the perfect thing to put for someone under the tree. My biggest recommendation for this is like if you are starting to genuinely like feel the strain on your eyes or you're feeling your screen time in a negative way, this is a really cool brand to just give a try, see if they work for you and see if they help. They've helped me a ton in the past year with eye strain and I think they're a great product. I will have them linked in my description box down below. Thank you so much to Felix Grey for sponsoring this video and also making sure my eyes do not get constantly strained and let's jump into the video. A lot of people do view this drama as sort of drama Geddon 2 or Sister Geddon. If you're confused as to why, I did make a video a few months back talking about Drama Geddon 1, which involved Manny MUA, Laura Lee, Gabriel Zamora, Nikita Dragon, and Jeffree Star. And I kind of did a whole breakdown on that topic and situation. And not that I feel like you need to know about that before jumping into this video, but I do think it would provide a lot of context. Basically the gist is that Manny, Laura, Gabriel, and Nikita ended up getting really canceled for one of the first times we'd ever really seen in the beauty community like truly canceled. And Jeffree Star kind of got away from that situation scot-free. Um, so I do think it's important to just say that like I think the fact that Jeffree had already been so involved in something and gotten away with it um, does play into this a little bit. While Manny and Laura stayed pretty absent during Dramageddon 2, I will say that Jeffrey, Nikita, and Gabriel do play roles in what went down. So it's just interesting again to see the way that sort of with all of these major dramas there are some players that are continually in all of them. And what I also think is interesting is that during Dramageddon 1, Tati and James were pretty noticeably absent from all of the drama happening. They even made tweets talking about how they were purposefully staying out of Dramageddon 1, James even referring to himself as Switzerland. So while there are some repeat players, there's also some new people coming in that turned this into essentially what it was, which was just like this huge deal. I also think it's really funny because during the first Dramageddon in 2018, Tati and James were both really praised for their role in Dramageddon 1 or basically their lack of involvement in Dramageddon 1. It seemed like while every other major YouTuber sort of in their category was getting canceled and fighting amongst themselves, they were really able to stay out of it, which led to a lot of people really praising them. And I just think that it's really funny looking back now in 2021 to see that sort of reaction to those two YouTubers because now I would consider them pretty controversial and drama filled in their lives. Now, I feel like in order to accurately sort of sum up how Dramageddon 2 went and unfolded, it sort of came in waves. So I would say that the very first wave of Dramageddon 2 was Tati and James. They were sort of the two main players in all of this. And I think before we can even get into what happened in Tati's by sister video and what happened, you know, after all of that, I think it's really important to also talk about what was happening leading up to Tati's by sister video, because I think all of that really adds a lot of context into why the by sister video became what it was. Now, while James sort of claimed to be Switzerland during Dramageddon 1, he was anything but scandal free. Basically since the beginning of his career, he had been known to get into a bunch of different scandals and controversies. I want to do a whole video on the evolution of James Charles where I sort of get into this, but I think some really noticeable one when he posted his sort of first viral photo, which was him claiming that he took his high school pictures with a ring light. It came out like a year after that those viral photos were photoshopped. He also gotten some drama with the cast of of it the movie. He got into some drama with Ariana Grande for calling her out. He got into a lot of trouble when he posted a racist tweet that was about traveling to Africa and getting Ebola. Like there was just a lot leading up to this that made James a very scandalous and problematic YouTuber even before Dramageddon 1 had happened. I also think that because of the nature of James Charles's content, he was usually posting videos that I think were much more geared toward younger like teens and tweens. And a lot of times that sort of rubbed older audiences the wrong way. His content sometimes came across as very cringy or overly scripted or kind of annoying. So I think there was already a large group of people in the beauty space who maybe weren't like younger kids who just didn't gel with his content, which to be fair, it wasn't being made for them. But still, there's just a lot of people who didn't vibe with his content to begin with. Now, if you're looking at someone like James, who is this young, very scandalous person who is making a lot of really bad mistakes, who is constantly in drama, I would say that Tati was basically the exact opposite of that. She was very well respected in the makeup community. She'd been in a few different 
scandals before, but nothing like what James had gone through. I think the worst thing that she had done up until this point was befriend Jeffree Star, despite his very racist past, and sort of being dismissive of people who were trying to warn her about those things. Like she was openly very dismissive towards Jackie Ina when she tried to bring attention to this. However, despite that, I think that the overall view of Tati in the makeup space was that she was a little bit older. She was much more professional. Her videos focused solely on the makeup. She wasn't somebody that you were often seeing in drama channel thumbnails. And I also think that she had built up a level of credibility that a lot of other influencers at that time were losing. She wasn't constantly doing brand deals. She didn't have a million different codes with like Morphe and Sigma brushes. She was really just seen as this very trustworthy, unbiased source. And I think a lot of people gravitated towards her for that reason. Now, I think if we're talking about leading up into like probably a month, a month and a half before the Bi Sister video dropped, there was a lot that happened that I think, again, led up to all of this becoming as big as it was. The month and a half leading up to the Bi Sister video, Tati was in no drama. She was not being criticized heavily. She was not having any big things going on. The launch of Halo had happened a few months prior and it had gotten her into a little bit of shit just because because people were very confused by why she was bringing out vitamins, which is kind of weird, but nothing like crazy. There wasn't any sort of major drama happening. People weren't questioning her integrity as a person. On the flip side, in the month and a half leading up to the Bi Sister video for James Charles, he was in a very different position. I think one of the first things you have to talk about when you're talking about the months leading up to the Bi Sister video is the James Charles sister tour. So James Charles announced that he was going to be going on tour and he was going to be basically doing some like meet and greets, some Q and A's on this tour. He would be doing makeup stuff on the tour. He would be singing on the tour. And the only way that you could buy a package to meet James in person, like do the meet and greet portion of the show was by paying $500 for a ticket where you got access to meet him. Now, when people heard these prices, I think they were rightfully very much like, what? <laughs> Most people were comparing the fact that you could go to like a Beyonce concert for under $500. You could go to a Bruno Mars concert for under $500. And just the fact that he was charging so much money just for like the honor to meet him was a little bit strange to a lot of people, especially considering other YouTubers had gone on tour prior to this and their price point was nowhere near the $500 mark. James later tried to sort of defend this decision by basically saying that he was trying to do sort of a limited option for the VIP so that way it was actually like a real hangout and people actually got to meet him. After receiving a lot of backlash, he later changed the tiering so that way instead of being able to only pay $500 and that was your only chance to meet him, if you bought like the $90 ticket, you would still get the meet and greet. You just wouldn't get all of the extra stuff. I think the general consensus during the whole sisters tour ticket pricing deal was that I think a lot of people just felt like James had gotten a really big head. And honestly, I fully agree with that. Like as a person who was watching all of this unfold, I also felt like he had gotten really arrogant and really big headed about everything. I think the gall to charge $500 for the honor to meet you, um, even if it was somebody like, I don't even know, like Taylor Swift or like Ariana Grande, like I would still be like, what the fuck are you doing? That is just so much money to spend to meet a person and for like a 90 minute show that is basically just gonna be James talking. Additionally, around the same time, he got into a lot of hot water because Marlena Stell, who is the owner of Makeup Geek and kind of an OG influencer, she tweeted out that she was working with Netflix on a docu-series called Broken, which was going to be talking about the beauty community. James saw this tweet basically in a very petty state um, tweeted at Netflix that they need to talk to him and that Netflix can't trust this woman. That's how he referred to her, her insight into the makeup community and that he had a full outline of a beauty community series documentary that he wanted to do and that he would have been a much better person to be chosen for this and basically just called Marlena out, called out Netflix and really just showed sort of a very like petty, arrogant side to himself. Even then, like looking back, that whole thing was so 
ridiculous to me. It was just like a situation where he was obviously seeping with jealousy and anger because he had had this idea, which by the way, a documentary on the beauty community is not like a new idea. That's not like a crazy one of a kind, unique perspective. And James Charles, despite the fact that he had done this collaboration with Morphe, he's not a makeup brand owner. So his whole thing was like, I am more qualified as a 20 year old YouTuber to give a sort of overview of the beauty community than someone who actually owns a brand, has been an influencer for longer than I've been alive, basically. Like I am more qualified than her. And yet again, this was just a situation where a lot of people just felt like he had a really highly inflated ego to tweet at Netflix and shit on somebody else's opportunity and to kind of like just mock her and make fun of her and try to tear her down um, was really gross to see. I think for a lot of people, it really put them off to James and again, just showed this sort of ego he was building. And also additionally, like in hindsight, that Netflix documentary wasn't even about the beauty community. It, I did a whole video on it when it came out because a lot of people were really confused. It wasn't even about like the beauty makeup industry or the beauty space or anything like that. It was about counterfeit makeup and the dangers of the counterfeit makeup market. Like that was the entire premise of it. Arlena was just in it to give the perspective of a brand owner, something that James Charles could not have given to Netflix. I also think it's important to note that James Charles had come out with his James Charles Morphe palette a few months prior to the Bi Sister scandal. And again, I think that all of this was really just like a building effect. There was the Marlena incident, there was the Sisters Tour incident, and then he had put up this palette that he was just again starting to get a really big head about. He was calling it the best palette ever created, was retweeting people who were like destroying the makeup. Like there was one girl on who posted a TikTok just to like destroy the palette for a TikTok, which is totally within her right to do. And he like retweeted that video bashing her, basically saying that she was like a bad person because so many people wanted that palette and couldn't get it. And like, how dare she use her own palette that way? Stuff like this, where it's just all building up where this sort of image of James was definitely already really poor in the public eye. And if you're looking at that compared to someone like Tati and Jeffree Star, who also played a big role in Sister Geddon, their images were a lot better. I mean, like I said, Tati had really just dealt with the Halo Beauty stuff, but she was starting to come back from that. Um, Jeffrey had just come out of Dramageddon 1 and was filming another series with Shane Dawson. So he was also like on top and really prominent and like doing really well. So if you're looking at the situation from even before Tati ever filmed anything about James, the public opinion was already stacked very unequally in Tati and Jeffree Star's favor versus James, just because the public opinion of him was so bad. Now, the other thing I think is important to note is that right before the Tati video, James Charles had gotten into a bit of hot water. He had flown out a boy he had been talking to to Coachella. This boy's name was Gage Gomez. He was a model from New York City and the two were spotted together at the first weekend of Coachella. Um, people were asking James if this was his new boyfriend and James subtweeted Gage and also publicly called Gage out for being a con artist and a scammer saying that he lied to him. He scammed him out of Coachella tickets and that he was really hurt by this person. Because James has a very large, mostly young fan base, a a lot of them went to Gage's social medias trying to defend James and were like calling out Gage, calling him horrible names. So Gage made a video defending himself, basically saying that he did not scam James, that he was clear with him from the start, that he wasn't gay. Um, just kind of trying to come out and defend his stance on it um, by basically saying that he kind of wanted to experiment, but also wasn't entirely comfortable and also expressed that he had felt sort of pressured by James into making up his mind about his sexuality. Um, when he wasn't really ready to do that and wasn't really sure how to figure that out yet. But according to James's side of the story, this issue with Gage sort of put a dark cloud over the first Coachella weekend. So for a weekend two, because Coachella happens two weekends in a row, one after the other, it's basically the same show um, for most weekends, but it's just to do it twice. So for weekend two, James and his group of friends decided that they wanted to go back to Coachella for weekend two to try to sort of recreate these memories and enjoy it a second time without this boy. They made the decision on Friday night and James was able to secure some VIP tickets. However, these tickets weren't artist tickets. VIP tickets are like, um, just like ele elevated tickets. You get to go in like the VIP lounges, you get to go in parts of the um, crowd, like you get to sort of cut in line of the crowd and be towards the front. They're more 
expensive, but anybody can buy those. Whereas artist passes, usually companies will be able to get a bunch of those to give out to influencers. Or if you're like Billie Eilish's best friend, she could give you an artist pass. It gives you even more exclusive access to the festival and it's even more private. You're not gonna see just like everyday people in the artist lounge. So James went to Coachella on Saturday and he was in the VIP section and his claim is that he was getting mobbed. So he texted his friend Nikita Dragon, who he knew had gotten an artist pass from Sugar Bear Hair, which was a vitamin company. Nikita gave him Sugar Bear's Hair's contact. Sugar Bear Hair had a bunch of extra artist passes they could give him. He signed a contract to do an Instagram story for them. They gave him the passes. It was a done deal. Everything's fine. James gets to enjoy the rest of Coachella with his friends, whatever. So the Monday when he got back from Coachella, he posted his Sugar Bear Hair Instagram swipe up. It was basically like a um, glorified like melatonin. That was basically the point of these. They were supposed to help with sleep. And this is where the story gets a little conflated. According to Tati, James didn't text her until after he put up the story. According to James, he texted her before the story went up. Either way, based on the text messages that James later showed, it does seem like instead of coming from a place of apologizing, he was kind of immediately coming from a place of trying to do damage control, knowing he made a mistake, not really wanting to own up to it, and also just kind of wanting to brush past it. And Tati was upset about this. So she got on her Instagram stories and was crying and was basically saying how she felt really betrayed by somebody in her life, felt like she had experienced this slap in the face, like she was always there and supportive supportive of her fellow YouTubers and that none of them were ever as supportive of her. She felt really disappointed by a lot of things that had happened lately and she was just in a really bad mood and really down. People very quickly pieced together that this Instagram story was about James Charles. It wasn't hard to figure out, especially given that he had just done a vitamin sponsorship and she was pretty openly talking about how she didn't feel supported. James then tried to reach out to Tati and Tati's husband, who's also named James, tried to reach out to them both multiple times. They weren't answering him. They didn't want to talk to him. And so he later posted an apology on his Instagram story where he basically apologized to Tati for taking the sponsorship, uh, that he loved Halo Beauty, supported Halo Beauty, and he was apologetic to having done that and hurt his friend. Now, after James posted this story, this whole thing kind of blew up. I don't, I wouldn't say it was like a massive drama, but like I remember I made a video about it of like the Tati crying and, you know, James's story confirming that it was about him and sort of this drama of James being a not so supportive friend. And, and honestly, this is hard to say because I think the drama community in and of itself was very different at the time. But again, I think that if all of these things hadn't already been happening with James Charles, where it was like the Gage Gomez situation, where he was being accused of like pressuring someone, sisters tour, the calling out Marlena Stell, like at that point in time, most things that James did were getting reported on just because of the nature of how the drama community was working. Um, but I don't know if it would have been as big a deal. I think for a lot of people sort of betraying some someone who had been his mentor and had worked with him really closely and helped his channel. I think a lot of people were really grossed out by that and really disgusted by that. And a lot of people were obviously commenting on that and already sort of preemptively taking Tati's side. Now, a few days after all this happened, James actually was going to Australia because he was doing a bunch of press tours and meet and greets over there. So James hopped on a plane to Australia. He flew over there. He was down under, okay? Before we get into the bi sister thing, because this is when Tati posts by sister, which I think a lot of people know about. It's obviously a very infamous video. I do just want to say one thing really quick. At the end of the day, if you rewatch Tati's by sister video, and I think D'Angelo Wallace, he made really good videos. I know you can't watch them anymore, but he made really good videos about Tati, Jeffrey, and Shane sort of just like unpacking all of this. At the end of the day, the core of the issue, and I think the major catalyst for Tati in making by sister was this anger at James for promoting a competitor. I understand and from a friendship perspective that you want your friends to support you and your endeavors. And I don't think it's a bad thing to expect your friends to support you. For example, like I launch merch a lot and my friends will always buy my merch. They will always support me. I would never get mad at them for not doing that, but they do because they're my friends, they love me, they support me. However, if I were to tell my friends, hey, I appreciate that you're supporting my merch and I appreciate that you're wearing it, but you also on top of that now can't wear another YouTuber's merch. Like you can't openly support or post a picture of you wearing another YouTuber's merch because that YouTuber is my direct competition. That's not really how like 
business or friendships or life should work. Tati made it very clear in a lot of her videos about Halo Beauty that she wasn't really sending out a ton of PR. She wasn't really doing any sponsorships. Her whole motto behind the business was that she wanted the brand to speak for itself. And she wanted people to want to review it, not because they were being paid. And while that's all well and good, like I think that's fine. I don't think that's a bad business approach. And also like on top of that, I don't think that it's a bad thing to ask your friends who are also in the influencer space to just like help you out, especially as a new business. I don't think that's bad. What I do think is kind of strange is to ask your friends to lose out on potentially thousands of dollars just because like you don't want them to promote your competition. Like you're not willing to pay them so that it's an exclusive deal between you and them. You don't wanna do that, but you also don't want other companies to try to pay them. You want sort of the best of both worlds. Tati touched on this in her Buy Sister video. She basically said that buying vitamins is not the same as buying eyeshadow palettes. An eyeshadow palette, like you can have multiples of, but with vitamins, there's really only, you know, one that you can sort of stick to. So by promoting her competition, it's very different. I, I personally just think that like, when you start muddying business and friendship in that way, especially as some of the top influencers on any platform, you're going to get hurt at some point. You can't expect your friends to just lose out on money, especially with a brand that is so ingrained into the influencer space like Sugar Bear Hair. So my kind of final thoughts on that is like, it's not unreasonable to ask your friends to support you. It is unreasonable to ask them to lose out on thousands of dollars, especially when you're not willing to pay them what they're worth in the first place either. And also on top of that, I do think it's just kind of hypocritical of Tati to take that stance because she had before for this compared other influencer palettes. She had promoted competing influencer makeup brands. She had given unfavorable reviews like with the Emily Noel palette of influencer palettes and actively hurt sales for other influencers. So I just think it was kind of like a hypocritical situation for her to be in. And I disagree with her stance that like, she's not gonna pay you, but that means nobody else can pay you either. Like, I just think that's a little immature and silly, especially for someone who is trying to run what is, I'm assuming is like a million dollar business. So while James is flying to uh, Australia, Tati is allegedly talking to Shane Dawson and Jeffree Star. Now we don't find this out till later, but I do think it's important to add context to this situation because Tati later came out and said that during this time, while James was in Australia, Shane and Jeffrey came to her with a lot of information about allegations against James, a lot of information that could really hurt James's career, basically how he had been inappropriate with different boys. There was allegedly voice recordings of people saying that he had done really bad stuff to them. And on top of that, just the way that he had spoken to a lot of different people and sort of the stories that a lot of different people in the makeup community had about him, uh, all of that was sort of being fed to Tati. Now how Tati paints this story um, later on is that sort of Jeffrey and Shane really manipulated her into making her video. And honestly, especially now in like almost 2022, I don't really buy that. I buy that they probably did sort of plant seeds, but I don't think Tati would have made this video with all of this information had James not directly screwed her over. I think to say that this video, the Bi Sister video, didn't come from any sort of spite um, is just a lie. Like, I don't think that's true. I think that she was spiteful. I think she was upset about the vitamins. I think she was upset about him taking the sponsorship. And so I think she made the video solely for that reason. She just also had some other reasons because Shane and Jeffrey had planted these sort of seeds in her brain. I also think it's important to note, and this is something that Tati sort of left out of her um, second video on the topic, but, but right before By Sister was posted, Gabriel Zamora, who was in Dramageddon 1, uh, had posted a sort of chit chat, get ready with me. He called out Tati by name, basically defended James, said it was kind of silly for her to get on her Instagram stories crying, that if she had a problem with James, she should just say it instead of, you know, sub, sub, I don't know what it's called, sub Instagramming, <laughs> sub Instagramming at him, like that if she has this big problem, she should just say what her problem is and be done with it. So Tati, at the beginning of the Bi Sister video, included that clip from Gabriel Zamora and said that she would now, okay, listen to Gabriel. She's gonna call James out directly. Now, I cannot even fully begin to describe to you what happened when Bi Sister dropped. I personally feel like it's one of those things in like the drama space where everybody like remembers where they were. Maybe I'm just dramatic, but I remember where I was. I was sitting at my desk enjoying a nice agave lemonade from Panera and I was perusing through YouTube as you 
do. And I saw Bye Sister and I thought it was a joke. I was like, oh, it's a Tati and James collaboration. And I clicked on the video and very quickly learned it was not a joke. And my mind was absolutely blown, as I think a lot of people's were. I think that the Bye Sister video can definitely best be described as sort of the pot boiling over. Like we had had all of this stuff that I already talked about leading up to this. I've literally already been filming for like an hour and we're just at Bye Sister. Like there was so much stuff leading up to this that by the time Bye Sister launched, I definitely think it was everything just boiled over. Everything just absolutely exploded because of this video. So in the Bye Sister video that Tati posted, she touched on a bunch of different things, but these were kind of the key takeaways that I got. Um, the first was that she was upset by how sort of viral her Instagram story had gone. And she also was upset because she felt like behind the scenes, James had been sort of dragging her through the mud despite trying to apologize to her face. She felt like she had heard things from a lot of different people where he had been talking badly about her. She knew that he had been in the DMs of multiple drama channels, sort of trying to get his side of the story across. And she felt that he was mostly in damage control mode instead of actually trying to repair the genuine friendship that she thought that they had. She also confirmed what I think a lot of people were thinking about James at the time, which was that he had gotten a really big ego and was basically just surrounded by yes men. And she also said that she had been trying to help him with this, but that she felt he was at a point where he couldn't be helped just because his ego had gotten too big. She also says, which I think is interesting, that James had assumed that Shane Dawson was involved in all of this because Shane and Tati had kind of hung out before all of this happened. And Tati is basically like, Shane has nothing to do with this, which I think is really interesting given what she later claimed. She talked about how she had mentored him and been there for him since he basically started his YouTube channel when nobody else really would be there for him because of all the drama he found himself in. She called out James for the way that he reacted when Marlena Stell was featured in her Netflix documentary, which again, I mean, I agree with Tati on that point. I think that was absolutely absurd. And then I think one of the most sort of interesting things about this video was that she called out James's sort of sexual misconduct and the way that he treated young men around him and the way that he sort of used his fame in order to attract young men and try to sort of manipulate them. And this was something that I think a lot of people took really to heart. This was not the main point of Tati's video. It's so interesting because when I was first starting this video, I felt like this was a much bigger part of the video, her discussing this sort of behavior, because when she launched this video, that's what everyone was talking about. It almost felt like she was confirming the Gage Gomez story and she was also sort of confirming a story there was this waiter in Seattle when Tati, Jeffrey, and James all went to dinner for Tati's birthday. There was a waiter that James was saying really vulgar stuff about. And later it was kind of said that the waiter had felt really uncomfortable by James's advances and all of these other things. So that was all happening too. Tati was basically confirming that all of those things happened. Granted, it was only like five minutes of this 40 minute video, but I think at the time hearing that confirmation from somebody who seemed so trustworthy like Tati, she had never really lied about something like that before. She had never really inserted herself into anything like that before. I think a lot of people took that as like a really serious confirmation of the allegations against James. She called out James's mom, which I struggle, I've always struggled with that one. There's some context to this too, and this is kind of a small detail in the grand scheme of things, but this is a point that I've always struggled with. When Tati made her Instagram story and people found out it was James and he was getting attacked, um, James Charles's mom, was on Instagram and she was responding to comments, basically saying that Tati was the immature one and sort of defending James. I struggle with this um, because I, I am sympathetic to the parent of a very famous person. I always will be. I cannot imagine being a parent and having to read horrific things about your child on the internet and not want to protect them. Do I think it's better just for the sake of everyone if parents stay out of stuff Yes, I think it is. Like, honestly, I just think it's much cleaner, a lot less messy. However, from a parent and like family perspective, I can also understand why James's mom would have felt very defensive of her son, especially given that Tati was really just mad at him because he like did a brand deal. Like I can also understand from her perspective, um, but she basically like Tati called out his mom, which I disagree with, I think. I think that's where I land on that. I think I disagree with it. I don't think he or his mom should have gotten involved in the first place, but I also like, I see both sides. I disagree with Tati 
calling her out and basically saying that she wasn't being an attentive enough mother because she was like liking comments on Instagram. I think that's just a very low blow. She also goes on for about 10 minutes talking about why her brand is better than Sugar Bear Hair, which is interesting. Um, and then basically ends the video by saying that she is ending her friendship with James Charles. So shortly after this video launched, all hell broke loose. I mean, every drama channel, even people who weren't drama channels, every channel that you can imagine started talking about this situation and really going into detail on Tati's video, what she meant in her video, what she was saying in her video. And the whole thing really blew up very quickly. A few hours after Tati's video, James posted his own video, which was the best way I can describe it is bad. He didn't really say anything. He was like crying. He was on a balcony of a hotel. He looked like absolutely terrible. He was apologizing to Tati and he also wasn't refuting any of the claims that Tati had made about him, especially in regards to the young men that he had been inappropriate with. Um, so I think a lot of people took that video as sort of an omission of guilt um, because they were like, well, why aren't you denying any of this? If you're not denying it, then that means it's true. Myself included. I was like, why is he not denying? If, if he's not denying it, that means it's true. If he's literally just getting on apologizing to Tati, that means that her video holds weight. And I think that that video of James was really sort of a nail in the coffin in that moment in time because everybody was already inclined to believe Tati because of all of the stuff leading up to this. So when James posted that video and just apologized to Tati, it just kind of confirmed everything she said. And that is when people started unsubscribing from James in like hordes. Like people just were immediately unsubscribing from his channel. On top of that, the waiter from Seattle that was discussed in Tati's video, whose name was Sam, made a video talking about his experience with James, basically again alluding to the fact that he felt very pressured by James, that he felt like James didn't respect his sexuality, and so on and so forth. So that was also adding to all of this, was now the two people that Tati had mentioned came forward and have now said that they had really negative interactions with this person and that they felt uncomfortable with this person. Now the other interesting tidbit about this day, the day Tati posted by sister, and the day that James posted did his response was that James was supposed to do a massive meet and greet at a mall. So it, there were thousands of people waiting at this mall to see and meet James Charles right after this very explosive video was posted. So obviously tons of people went with their cameras who had no interest in meeting James, but really just wanted to see what his reaction was going to be to all of this. Tons of people came and there were videos that were really awkward of him like showing up like four hours late, trying to meet his fans, trying to speak, but obviously being very distraught. So that also was kind of adding to this whole weird narrative because it was like, first of all, why would you not just cancel that? Second of all, this video you just posted, you're like admitting all of this and now you're like hugging your fans and thanking them for the support. Like the optics of the entire situation for James was really bad. And on top of that, not only was this meet and greet happening, but Jeffree Star started tweeting a ton about the situation, talking about how Tati's video was true. He was backing Tati. He was saying everything that she said was true. And also saying that after February, there was a reason that James wasn't invited to his home anymore. Again, because Jeffrey had a lot of credibility because he had just done this series with Shane, he had come out of drama getting one pretty much completely unscathed. A lot of people took his word for it and were really believing everything that was said about James in that video by Tati. And I think too, because Jeffrey really more so talked about the fact that James was really inappropriate with boys and that he was using his fame for evil and that he was, you know, getting a really big head and having a really big ego. I think people very quickly kind of forgot about the whole vitamin aspect of things, which kind of rightfully so. Vitamins seem like child's play. So people quickly kind of forgot about the vitamins thing. And they more so started focusing on that aspect of the video because that was something that was like, it's not just you're a bad friend and you like stabbed your friend in the back. You're actually being predatory. Now, as the day went on, James Charles was hemorrhaging subscribers and Tati was growing in subscribers. James Charles was the first YouTuber ever to lose 1 million subscribers subscribers in less than 24 hours, which is crazy, like absolutely insane to think about losing that many subscribers in 24 hours. And as that was going on, on top of that, to add like to this just mass amount of information that was coming out was a lot of young men and boys started coming forward, talking 
about how they had had really awkward, uncomfortable interactions with James on social media. They had shown screenshots of him sliding into their DMs with like unsolicited, really like very over the top compliments or not really respecting if they were straight or gay or what their sexual orientation was, but still trying to flirt with them. And again, this all just kind of added to this whole narrative of him being very, very predatory to people and trying to use his fame to get the attention that he wanted from people. Now, the few days following the Bi Sister video, things were pretty quiet from James's side. Jeffrey was still tweeting and doing things, but Tati also was pretty silent. There was this one really weird paparazzi video that came out where James was arriving. It was very obviously staged, I'm sorry. This was the most staged paparazzi photo. James was very obviously trying to like leave Australia and he was wearing this like bedazzled jacket with like no makeup and he was like looking straight forward and like not acknowledging the cameras and like people were trying to take his picture and video him. And it was just a very awkward, obviously staged photo op. Like they obviously just wanted to show that he was like humble and trying to get his life back on track. Then a few days after that, Tati uploaded a video titled Why I Did It, which basically the whole gist of that video was mostly just her saying that she really wanted to give James a wake up call and she didn't know how to do that without doing it publicly, but that she had no idea it would turn into what it turned into. And she basically apologized to James saying that that wasn't her intention to like blow this up and have him lose millions of followers. And Jeffree Star also after Tati's video made a Snapchat video where he was basically saying like he also did not anticipate this to blow up as much. He didn't expect his tweets to gain as much traction as they did, everything like that. And then we get to No More Lies. No More Lies I think is really considered this sort of like blueprint of how to do a YouTuber apology. And looking back on it, I don't really understand why, especially knowing what we know now about everything. Even at the time that No More Lies happened, I remember I was still so skeptical of this whole situation because it really felt like James sort of did like a distraction bit. Like he focused really heavily on the things that he could adamantly prove, like the fact that he texted Tati before he did the Instagram story, the fact that he tried to reach out to Tati multiple times and was ignored. Those were all things that he could prove really adamantly while also sort of skating over and not fully addressing a lot of the allegations that the young men who came forward were saying. He tried to say that because this person had called him a bunch of times or because this person had said that they wanted to try to write things, that that must mean that their entire story was bullshit and they were lying. He used the fact that he was a 19 year old virgin to skate over the idea that he could ever possibly use his fame as a way to try and manipulate people, which I think is just kind of inherently problematic. You don't have to be having sex with people in order to make them feel uncomfortable um, or, you know, use your fame to try to talk to them. He focused a lot on fake stories that have been going around about him instead of really addressing any of the real stories. And his sort of excuse for DMing a bunch of random people unsolicited compliments was basically that he was just trying to like be flirty and that he DM them all and apologized if it made them uncomfortable, which I think would have been a nice sentiment had he actually internalized that and stopped doing it. But we learned the year later that he never stopped doing that. He also shares a lot of screenshots of texts that Jeffree Star sent him, where Jeffree Star was just saying some really vile stuff. I don't think anyone who knew about Jeffree Star's behavior prior to this was surprised that he was saying really vile stuff to James or that he was saying really vile stuff to like James's brother on social media. I don't think that that really surprised anyone who was aware of Jeffree Star, where James's video was really good. And I think the reason it really helped turn the tide for him was that it was very well organized. It had a lot of receipts. It had a ton of screenshots, a ton of evidence to back things up. And in places he didn't have evidence, he spoke very clearly and with a lot of conviction. And also the video was just so long. Like there was so much that he covered and there was so much that was happening in the video that I think a lot of people just heard him talking in a normal voice and saw that he had at least some proof that some of this was obviously a little bit bullshit and kind of of ran with it. And I think the reason that the No More Lies video and the sort of phenomenon it created, I think the reason it's so interesting is because this was kind of the first level of cancellation that we'd seen on YouTube to this scale. I actually don't think there's been anything really similar to this, except maybe the creep show art situation. But even that, like, 
it was more percentage wise like she didn't have nearly as many subscribers as James had when all of this happened she just lost a similar percentage we still haven't seen anything really like this to this scale happen and I think additionally we haven't seen anything like this happen and have the flip-flop happen so hard where people clicked on no more lies unsubscribed from James believing Tati fully believing everything everyone said fully really being against him and his behavior and they left no more lies feeling sympathetic for him feeling like Tati he was a liar and feeling like James was the best thing ever. Now at first when James posted No More Lies, Tati was pretty silent and she actually stayed silent for a very long time after this. But Jeffree Star had a lot to say. He was tweeting basically that James was lying, that nothing in his video was accurate, that he had receipts to prove that this wasn't accurate. He had ways of knowing that this wasn't accurate and he was going to be making a video just exposing everything that happened with James Charles and exposing everything that he had done. So while I think a lot of people were back on sort of the like Team James side of things, people were also anxiously awaiting what Jeffree Star had to say because up until this point, he was seen for some reason as a very trustworthy YouTuber. And so the next day when Jeffree did upload his video, I think a lot of people were kind of taken aback and a little disappointed. And that was because Jeffree's video, he basically didn't say anything. He didn't show any messages from James, didn't really dispute a lot of the facts that James said in his video. There was no evidence provided like he claimed there was going to be there was no anything really. It was just him saying that he did not expect things to blow up the way they did. He apologized to James for having them blow up the way they did and the way that he contributed. And he didn't want to be this person anymore that was constantly in drama and constantly surrounded by all of this negativity. He just wanted to go on like living his positive life. And like that was that on that. So with no real other avenues of what to believe, because all three of the main people involved in this first Dramageddon were staying completely silent, most people just kind of like picked who they believe and kind of left it at that. James was able to gain back almost every single subscriber that he had lost. I think he lost like three, I think 3.5 million total. And he gained like 2 million back right away. And then over time, obviously got back to where he was before and then surpassed that number. Tati hit 10 million subscribers at one point, but then started going down and has been pretty much continually going down ever since. Jeffree Star didn't really see any massive fluctuations. It was like a couple hundred thousand gained, couple hundred thousand lost. It was really James and Tati who were having these really big sort of swing in subscribers. However, when this drama sort of ended, plot twist, it didn't end. Um, when this drama sort of ended, while I think a lot of people did consider James Charles to be sort of the winner of everything because the No More Lies video was seen so positively and had such a positive public perception, I don't think any of these three people came out as winners. James Charles had just experienced one of the most intense cancellations anyone had ever seen. He canceled his sister's tour. He didn't go back to the internet for like a month and a half. And even when he did, there was definitely a slow start before he started getting the views that he once had for the Bi Sister scandal. It definitely stunted his growth. Tati didn't post to the internet for a long time and was really struggling to keep her subscriber base up. And when she did finally come back, it was short lived because then she disappeared again and was obviously really struggling with the aftermath of this. Even Jeffree Star, a lot of people, I think loved Jeffree Star, especially during the first Dramageddon because he kept it really real and he was like really savage. He wasn't afraid to expose people. He wasn't afraid afraid to like tell the truth. And I think that his core fan base who really liked that about him were very disappointed that he had so much to say about the situation until it was time to actually make a video and like show evidence for what he was saying. So I think a lot of trust was lost in Jeffree Star as sort of this really honest person. And I think that that ultimately ended up biting him in the ass a year later. Ultimately, all three basically just decided to go their separate ways, at least for the rest of 2019. And we didn't really hear too much about this again until Shane Dawson launched his docu-series about Jeffree Star and the beauty community in 2019. Shane really alluded in the trailer of the video that the James Charles Tati drama was going to play a really huge role in everything. But then when the series actually rolled out, he didn't talk about it at all. And after some outrage from people, he ended up putting in just kind of like short snippets of his and Rylan's reaction and Jeffree's reaction to the Bi Sister scandal. But it wasn't anything super like salacious or anything people actually wanted to see. It was more so just like a way to make Jeffrey look good. That's my theory, I guess, is it made Jeffree Star look a lot better in that situation than he actually was. 
And then we didn't hear about this situation again for almost an entire year. Now, I hate to do this to you guys, but this video is going to have to be two parts because what we are about to talk about next, which is some consider it like Dramageddon 3. Personally, I consider it a continuation of Dramageddon 2 or Sister Geddon. But either way, it is a lot to put into one singular video. So I think splitting this up into two parts is just going to be the most effective way to be able to get all of the information across. I honestly can't speak any longer. I've been filming for like two and a half hours. But yeah, I'll have that up for you guys tomorrow. I won't make you wait too long. It'll be like one day after the other. We'll be good to go. Then please let me know what you think about Dramageddon 2 in the comments down below. What did you think then in 2019? And what do you think now in 2022? Because I think it's really interesting the way that my perspective personally has changed on the entire situation. It used to be when I was first sort of commentating on this as it was happening, my perception was who is the good guy and who is the bad guy in this situation. Like that's how I was really looking at it. But now looking at it from a 2022 perspective, from an almost 2022 perspective, it's more of a all of these people collectively just suck. And like that's that on that. Like they all just kind of suck. They all are not great. None of them are super redeeming people in my opinion as far as like not redeeming people. None of them are super redeeming content creators in my opinion. Um, so yeah, let me know what you guys think about that down below. I love you guys so much. If you like this video, please like and subscribe or just like or just subscribe or do neither. Honestly, just so happy you're watching me. Thank you so much for being here. My merch, including my limited edition Glomus merch, my social medias and my vlog and podcast channel will all be linked down below along with my social justice spotlight where you can look at ways to give back this holiday season. I love you guys so much and I will see you tomorrow for part two. Bye!